Good morning, everyone. How very nice it is to be here again. It's like old times, isn't it? Well, before I dispense your musical prescriptions, and I have a very full programme today, may I thank all those who have welcomed the return of this programme. And to prove that we're really well and truly back in the old routine, just a brief word about the weather here in Plymouth. I'm afraid it's nothing to write home about. There's a damp feeling everywhere. It rained during the night, and there's more to come. Well, among those saying welcome back to as prescribed are the staff and patients in the Royal Cornwall Hospital at Trillisk, Truro, and the doctors, patients and nursing staff at Christchurch Hospital in Hampshire. Mr Gilbert is the hospital's kitchen superintendent of the Truro Hospital, and he puts pen to paper with a request that we include all the staff and past and present patients at Trillisk. And the Hampshire prescription has been written by the chairman and committee of the Christchurch Hospital League of Friends, who send warmest wishes for Christmas to everyone in Christchurch Hospital. Well, among their musical favourites at this time of year are these two Christmas carols, two that need no further introduction. <laughs> The first man to put Christmas on the map, as it were, was Captain Cook. He discovered Christmas Island in the Pacific on Christmas Day, 1777. Well, I don't know who discovered the Isle of Wight, but I do know that Mary and Morris Nunn have written from Appleford near Whitwell on behalf of Miss King and her blind and partially sighted friends in Polar's Home for the Blind in Newport on the island. And a very good morning to Miss King and to everyone in Polar's Home. Well, it's going to be an especially happy Christmas in one corner of Devon this year, and you will understand why when I read the card Mrs Brooks has written from Willow Cottage in Morton Hampstead. After many years, Mrs Brooks writes, after many years in hospital and much unhappiness, my son Alan is coming home for Christmas. He would be overjoyed to hear you speak to him and also to hear the song, I Could Have Danced All Night. Well, if by any chance Alan should be at home now, Mrs Brooks, this makes the occasion even happier. A happy Christmas to you both.
I mentioned Christmas Island just now. Well, our friends in Bristol can claim Christmas Steps and Christmas Street. Well, how about Cold Christmas? No, I'm not talking about the weather, but a village by that name, the little village of Cold Christmas in Hertfordshire. And in Surrey, very near Guildford, is a little place called Christmas Pie. Well, I haven't checked with the map, but I've been assured there really is such a place. But harking back to Christmas Steps in Bristol for a moment, I expect many of our radio friends in Southmead Hospital there have climbed those very steps many a time. And I wonder just how many have paused for breath on the way. It's a bit of a tall order, I remember, having to climb those steps in one go. Well, I'm linking this Bristol request with two similar cards from Devon for two hospitals in the county. One is addressed to Mrs. Audrey Williams in Charles Land Award at Devonport Hospital. And when Mrs. Williams is at home, she works in a local shop and most of her customers are children. Well, I'm sure you'd like to know, Mrs. Williams, that all the children are asking after you. They miss your smiling face and infinite patience. And all the little customers send their love and are longing to see you again in your familiar place behind the counter. The Belmont Hospital Tiverton is a place often included in as prescribed. A card here from matron and staff and all members of the League of Friends who send warmest wishes and greetings to all the patients at Belmont, some of whom have birthdays this month, incidentally. Mrs. Mrs. Hill, Mr. Harris, Mrs. Pincom, and Mrs. Hewell. Well, they tell me they'd like to hear something really stirring. Well, how about a selection of marching tunes arranged by Roger Barsotti, the conductor of the Metropolitan Police Band? Silent Night, Holy Night is a carol that everyone knows and loves. It's the hymn we remember as children. Well, this most beautiful of all Christmas carols was composed 150 years ago in a remote village in Austria. It was the work of a country priest and his best friend, the local schoolteacher. Well, in all those years, the carol that was first heard in the mountains has journeyed round the world. Well, I hope Mrs. Joslyn may be listening in Mount Gould Hospital, Plymouth. Mrs. Jocelyn to us, but Auntie Maud to Margaret, Douglas, Judith and Elizabeth, who write from South Wales, from Garfilly in Glamorganshire, and they send all their love from there. The carol is also being played to cheer up Mrs. Ballam of Church Road in Parkston, Dorset. Good morning, Mrs. Ballam. Love from your daughter Pamela in Fernside Avenue. From Cornwall, a card from the Bugle Branch Old Age Pensioners Association. All the senior citizens there send warmest greetings to 92 years old Mr. Herbert Thomas, to Mrs. Minnie Pinch, an ex-school teacher, and WRVS club leader Miss Amy Greger of Rosevere Road in Bugle. A brother writing for his sister, Mr. Ewart Hutchings of Babacombe Torquay, sending love to 90 years old Mrs. Bloom in the Wolseley home in Plymouth. 
And from Compton near Paynton, Lorna and Cess send warmest wishes for Christmas to Mrs Lily Rickard, who lives in St Dominic. Uh, Mrs Rickard, in company with a number of our listeners, has to remain indoors these wintry days. People born on Christmas Day are said to possess second sight. Well, as Sir Isaac Newton was born on December the 25th, this theory could well be true. Mr George of New Polzeth near Wadebridge in Cornwall came into this world on Christmas Day, 1896. Well, just recently he's been in hospital, but is now home again, we're glad to say. Well, at one time, Mr George was a bus conductor in London, and he kept everyone going, saying, move along there, please, all through the London Blitz. Well, loving wishes, Mr George, from Jane and Nicholas, and from your wife, of course. Well, how about those who were married on Christmas Day? Uh, second sight could well have guided them. Perhaps that's why Mr and Mrs Stanley Chant of Harcourt Street in Ebervale, Monmouthshire, chose the 25th of December as their wedding day. And now they've a large circle of family and friends sending congratulations and all good wishes. Uh, in particular, all the good folk living in the village of Henstridge in Somerset. Writing from Gloucestershire, Mr Royston Jordan, a member of the Forest Hospital's House Committee, has asked me to include the hospital staffs at Lidbrook Hospital, the Dilk Memorial Hospital in Cinderford, and the Lydnian District Hospital. And I'm also to include Mr Brian Keir of Worrell Hill, a lifelong invalid, and Mrs Eva Brooks, also of Worrell Hill, now a patient in the City General Hospital in Gloucester. And we all join in wishing Mrs Brooks a speedy return to good health. <laughs>
never on Sunday. Well, in the Sunday papers, you can't fail to see pages and pages offering suggestions for Christmas gifts. Gifts for the children, of course, and presents for the family and friends. Well, I must confess that one or two of the adverts offer some novel ideas for presents. How about a bedtime tear stopper? Well, to stop the young tears falling at bedtime, one advertiser offers a cuddly Australian koala bear. And to make the advert even more attractive, it goes on to say, absolutely adorable. Well, here's a present, a very personal gift for Mrs. Barbara Perrett of Maytree Road in Andover from her mother, Mrs. Ran of Abingdon Road in Ride. Well, during the past year, Mrs. Perrett, now home from hospital, has undergone four major operations. Well, a very good morning to you, Mrs. Perrett. Very much love from your mother, who'll be listening and sharing the music with you at home in Ride, Isle of Wight. A Christmas present for a very young listener in hospital, five-year-old Suzanne Franks in Ward 1 at the Princess Elizabeth Orthopaedic Hospital in Exeter. Well, hello, Suzanne. All your little friends in the beginner's department of the Methodist Church in South Moulton send lots of love. And in Sussex, a greeting for little Julie Booker of Felpham near Bognor Regis. Well, Juice Julie recently came out of hospital, minus her tonsils, only to go down immediately with chicken pox. Well, bad luck, Julie, but let's hope you'll be fit and well again by Christmas, Christmas Day at any rate. Lots of love from Mummy and Daddy. Well, apparently the first card, the first Christmas card ever, was posted just over a hundred years ago. The idea didn't catch on at first. It was only when the royal family started sending cards and greetings that the idea flourished in a big way. Well, on a card addressed to As Prescribed, the sick visitor of the Over 60 Club in Swanage, Dorset, reminds us that 11 of their valued members are unable to attend the Christmas celebrations and party. Well, the sick visitor and everyone connected with the club send all good wishes for a speedy recovery. In the village of Swanmore near Southampton, the name Harvey Stubbington will need no introduction. Mr. Stubbington, in his wheelchair, is very well known locally. And uh, uh, he, 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 it was good to read on the card that he's never anything but happy with a smile and always a cheery word for everyone. Isn't that nice? Well, a happy Christmas, Mr. Stubbington, from your many friends in Swanmore, in and around the village. Well, this music, I know, is a great favourite with you all.
just a snatch, just a soupçon of Handel's water music. Well, before dispensing the next prescription, may I just mention the new fortnightly series of gramophone record programmes starting in the new year, on January the 12th to be exact. The programme, the series, will be called Every Other Sunday and will consist of request music and messages for patients in hospitals and at home. The series will be run on similar lines to As Prescribed, uh, the only difference being that in As Prescribed, to be broadcast once a month, I shall be playing the organ. And in Every Other Sunday, the music you request will be on discs. So when you send in your request to me, care of the BBC in Plymouth, I wonder whether you'd care to mark your card organ or records. The choice is yours, of course. But now an organ arrangement of George Gershwin's lovely song, Love is Here to Stay. And I'm playing it especially for Mrs Ward of Sembley near Shaftesbury and her new baby Oliver. A beautifully written request from Joanna. Joanna, who's very proud of her young brother. And from the attractive little town of Foy in Cornwall, a request card from the matron of the local hospital. A matron wishes the programme a happy Christmas and a successful New Year, and with the staff and patients of Foy Hospital, she sends seasonal greetings to the Hospital Welfare Committee, thanking them for all their kindnesses during the past year. <laughs> I'm ending the programme as we began with some more of your favourite Christmas carols and I'm choosing the cards more or less at random from a bumper bundle. Mrs Blackler is staying with her daughter in Misterton near Crooker in Somerset and loved you Mrs Blackler from your sister Mildred and family in Liscard. Thompson House, Whitecroft Hospital, Newport, Isle of Wight. Well, that's the address of Mrs Lambert. Love and best wishes Mrs Lambert to you and to everyone in Whitecroft Hospital from your daughter Dorothy. Two of the pupils in Stanchester School at Stoke, Subhamden, Somerset have written this welcome card. Irving House at this school has adopted Summerland's Hospital for Old People. At Christmas time, we visit the hospital to sing carols and take a Christmas hamper. Would you again please play a selection of carols for the old people with good wishes from Irving House? We hope to visit the hospital again this week. I hope our friends in Woodland House St Austell are listening this morning. Woodland House is a county council home situated on the St Austell bypass. There are 48 residents there, their ages ranging from over 70 to well over 90. Uh, Mrs Davis looks after them all, she's the matron, and her husband is the superintendent. And I mustn't forget the assistant matron and a helpful staff of attendants. A very good morning to them all, with warmest greetings from the friends of Woodland House. Well, not far from St Austell is the village of Bugle, and it's there we greet Mr J Brokenshire. Good morning, Mr Brokenshire. All your friends at Bugle Methodist Church send greetings and good wishes for a speedy recovery. And there's time for just one more card, an interesting one, and it was posted on the summit of Mount Snowdon, some three and a half thousand feet up. Well, the writer of the card sends seasonal greetings to all the residents of Dor Vale, the old people's home in Cliff Road, Dawlish, South Devon. Well, the writer is herself a member of the staff at Dorvale, and she joins her colleagues in this Radio Grisman uh, greeting at Christmas.
has no more to say and no more to play until we meet again next Sunday. In the meantime, may I take this opportunity of thanking you for your many cards and letters. Until next Sunday, goodbye everyone and a very happy Christmas to you all. Dudley Savage at the organ of the ABC Theatre in Plymouth, and he'll be here again next Sunday at ten past eight. If you have a request, will you send details on a postcard, please, to as prescribed, BBC Plymouth.